struggle, although sometimes raw, <laughs> sometimes abrasive, sometimes passionate, I really offer you my truth unapologetically and unfiltered with honesty and authenticity. So I talk about my formative preteen and teenage years, purchasing my first African names book from Drum and Spear Bookstore. Y'all remember from DC back in the day, 14th Street. And guess who was at the cash register ringing up my book? None other than today's WAMU's Kojo and Namdi. I talk about the all white girls Catholic school, high school in Maryland. My parents made me attend and we weren't even Catholic, y'all. I talk about flirting with the Black Panther Party, brothers from the NAM. I talk about my college years, the Republic of New Africa, the attack on Aretha Franklin's daddy's church, my love for New African political science about reparations. I talk about the lawyer years, uh, most importantly, the inspiration for my father, the inspiration for my father to go on, girl, and get that darn law degree. I talk about the ketchup in my face case, which might have been hilarious had it not been for the possibility of such dire consequences should my client have been convicted. I talk about the Capitol bombing resistance case, a must read, and the David versus Goliath ABC case. And I go into my intimate personal life and talk about the spirit world, my brothers and sisters, about the spirit world being so very real. I talk about Me Too before there was the hashtag Me Too and about how the Me Too scrutiny today comes centuries late for this country's original victims of sexual exploitation, black women and girls who agonize horribly, often enforced silence during the enslavement era and beyond. How the white men of that day faced no consequences. How black men were not allowed to respond in defense of them in manners befitting of a human being. And that as a result, today's Me Too movement, today's Me Too movement should be expanded to reach back, not just 10, 20, or 30 years, Okay, Bill Cosby, okay. But to the beginnings of our forced sojourn in this country as victims of the enslavement era. My memoir talks about how putting some spice in my life was absolutely not nice. It was a, that was a very, very difficult chapter to write about sex lies videotape, about my big fat new African wedding and divorce. <laughs> my miracle birth baby. And that was some sure enough spiritual intervention and also about finding a husband through the classifieds. And I gave a personal glimpse from an insider's perspective into my policy world, into the passage of justice reform legislation such as the check, sec, second chance reentry bill, the disparity between crack and powder cocaine, my work around clemency, the craziness of congressional sausage making, and the pivotal role of strange bedfellows. I talk about sitting on the lap of that fine brother pulling security in the front office of the Black Panther Party, getting arrested right after graduating from law school, being accused of being an FBI agent, being detained at an airport five months pregnant as an alleged enemy of the state, winning a six-figure settlement for my client in a pivotal employment discrimination case, and being a catalyst which sparked the change to the infamous crack cocaine laws and more. And I talk about my vulnerabilities, terrified to walk across a skimpy roped 40 mile high canopy at Cancun National Park in Ghana. Ooh. Wailing and bawling on the back of that old donkey, the only way I could get up that daggone steep jagged mountainside to the Citadel in Haiti. Or every time I jumped <laughs> upon hearing the recurrent gunshot blast in Nigeria's Oyo State, even though I knew that the booms were in honor and in homage to the Ovisa Ogun. Whew! 